<laughs> what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Burnout Brighter Podcast. My name's Matt, and I'll be your host for this evening's events. This is episode 153. I'm joined, as always, by the stellar, the immaculate Lou. What's going on, dude? <laughs> <laughs> he switches it up every week on us. Eh? He does. It's like unnecessary, but we keep oh, going. Yeah. The more the more smoke he blows, it's like, oh, he's gonna name me this time for yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I, I'm glad that I keep you guys on your toes that much because we are also joined by the incredible, the divine Destiny. What's up, girl? Hey Matt, what's up? Good to be here. Sorry guys, I'm not gonna be on cam today because I'm in California and my setup is not like all that great, but I will be back Monday so you can see my face. Fun fact, uh cameras actually illegal in california which is why yeah. you're you can't Did you guys not one. know that yeah yeah um you Fun can't fact. be on yeah so this is a lie this is a <laughs> <laughs> and this week we are joined by developer extraordinaire making one of honestly the most visually interesting and coolest games i've had the pleasure of witnessing for a last little while developer of protodroid delta adam cream what's going on adam Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for, uh, I don't know, thanks for having my son on, too. You guys might see in the little corner there. That's He's him so cute. He can come BBC on anytime Earth. he wants. Ran, they want to look at you. Come on, look at him. Come say hi to the camera real quick. Look at your little <sighs> guy. So he's five. He starts kindergarten on Monday. You got to get in the <gasps> Oh, my gosh. Good oh my luck, God. buddy. Have fun. Oh is. my god, his smile is just oh, it's doing me. Oh my god, it's like sunshine. <laughs> he's <laughs> absolutely adorable. All right, buddy. You can go back to watching Earth. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I've been working on ProJoid for a little over two years now. The Kickstarter was in April of 2020, like right around the pandemic timing. And so, so it was weird back then. A lot of people were like, oh, definitely don't do a Kickstarter during a pandemic. But I feel like it was like, insert anything, don't do it during a pandemic. I don't think yeah. any one thing was like, oh, yeah, you know, now's a great time for that particular activity. <laughs> It's okay. It's the era of the pandemic was pretty much, let's just throw shit at the, at the wall and see what sticks. And sometimes, you know, sometimes it's fantastic things come out of it. Other times, uh, more fantastic things come out of it, like playing Minecraft with your friends and they never want to play with you again. Um, but on this week's episode, we're going to be talking oh all about Autotoid <laughs> Delta and Adam's wonderful career and the incredible game that he's working on. But before we get into all that, let's do a very quick round of what's new to check in with everyone. Adam, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to ask you, What's new? What's been going on? What have you been playing? What have you been watching? Just general life stuff. How are you doing? Oh, man. General life stuff. Uh, like I, I said, um, my son's going to kindergarten. That's kind of cool. Nice. School yeah. shopping is a lot of fun when you're doing it for like your kids. It's it's fun. Um, what's new besides that? Working on, oh, yeah, uh, game news. We're trying to push out like a, I would say a beta build, but maybe not that far along, but very close to like a beta where the game is like playable, start to finish. And the main thing missing are like some particular art assets. Um, incredible so, uh i don't know if folks know like i work a day job so game dev was like my side thing on, on the evenings weekends i took off this week though in order to get this beta like stamped and out the door um nice. so, like, so, yeah yeah so it's been yeah so is it a, a momentous week if we get it done <laughs> knock on wood i'm sure I you will i'm sure you'll get there i was gonna say i think it's incredible that like so many developers like yourself like this is their side kind of hustle like they have a day job and they're producing like these amazing games like your game looks like it definitely come from a triple a studio and this is oh something gosh. you do part-time you know like it's an, i can't mm -hmm. even imagine making a game i'm like we could play tic-tac-toe it can't be virtual i have classic paper game. and pencil and that's as good as yeah that's as good as it's gonna get <laughs> that's a classic i mean like people people they won't be playing protojoid in, in 100 years you know they will be playing in 100 years <laughs> they will be playing tic-tac-toe tic -tac <laughs> <laughs> classic game one of the best awesome well that's great dude i i, I wish you all the best in your continued uh beta ness in, in the rest of the week lou what's what about you what's new what's been going on uh not a whole lot uh still rewatching dragon ball z trying to get out <gasps> of it um yes we're, we're at the android saga right now which that's is a, really oh, good yeah. um that's mm, that's a good yeah, one that's some, it's some good stuff the, the end of the frieza saga is like it's a little bit drawn out yeah. and i read online that the Frieza saga and the fight with Frieza was so long because the mount the manga was catching up with the show. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, and in in the original Dragon Ball Z, the whole Frieza fight is over four hours long. Yeah, yeah it, it, 
it's crazy something like that yeah it's it's yeah. outrageously long but um, like in the manga it's like a i think like Frieza mentioned it's like a five minute encounter like actually yeah. because he's like <laughs> the planet's gonna so blow much- up filler in it like that they always do that they're like let's cut like well let's go see what bulma's doing no let's not let's finish the fight (laughs) is this still that long in kai then because isn't kai the one that's supposed to like chop out all the filler it's still really long in kai kai has some some arcs that are removed that they added as filler but for the main story arcs most of it is there um and it's still pretty long um i was talking to my girlfriend and saying dragon balls is the only show where you'll have like six episodes that take place within a five minute period in the show. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then, and then two episodes later, they skip three years in one episode. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Oh my goodness. What well, is now that? that? That's yeah. done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I, I went to a bachelor party this weekend and I was introduced to this new drinking game called mm. danger, danger can. Has anyone ever mm. heard of danger? No, that can? sounds dangerous. That sounds fun. <laughs> You're better off for not of hurt, not of uh, having heard it. So basically, you you stand in a circle, you get a can, a, a open like a, a full can of beer, you yell "danger can" three times, everyone chants with you, and on the third danger uh, can, you hit yourself in the head with the beer can, and you keep going around <laughs> in a circle until what? it explodes. <laughs> who, who, who? Oh my god! Why? <laughs> Oh, I, I, a point of clarification: These are sober people playing Danger Can, right? Like I feel oh. as though. How were does you it... sober at first? Like, were you sober when you started? You cannot <laughs> float. You can't float Danger Can unless everyone is a few drinks deep already. Okay, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I'm thinking nobody's like sober and like, yeah, I'm down to get a concussion tonight. Like, <laughs> no, you no. have to be. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Got it. Oh my goodness. I, our heads were hurting all over. One of the guys was like. <laughs> I couldn't find any Advil, so I just went to go take a nap. And we were like, oh, that's a great idea. Take a nap after yeah, you Yeah, no, a- absolutely not. You probably have a concussion. Do not go to sleep. Do not lay down. Oh, my God. Anyway, <laughs> it, well, it was a great time. Given how we celebrated 150, I think for 200, we need to get some virtual danger cam going. I think that's I hilarious. I will not be partaking in any danger cam. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely. That's awesome. Dee, what about you? What's new? What's been going on? Um, well, as you guys know, I'm out in California. My friend wanted to get a tattoo from like this uh, artist that she follows. Had no idea that the studio was so famous. Like, I guess the guy who owns it or some of the artists there, like tattoo LeBron James. They tra- they tattoo Post Malone. Um, her tattoo was a little over three k. Wow. And oh, listen, geez. I I'm not used to this. I, oh. I get it. I caught an I capped an attitude. Because the artist was two and a half hours late, right? So I was I was asking all of my friends, and I was like, "Hey, is this normal for the artist to be this late?" But I guess when you work with somebody who's on that level, that's quite normal. Like it's like they're doing you a favor by by accepting your money oh and you getting the tattoo. Please. The tattoo looks it looks great, but I absolutely would not. Like she would have just. She wouldn't have gotten my three grand because that's just how <laughs> irritated I was sitting there with her. Like I ended up leaving her. She she fell asleep and I ended up just being like, yo, I'm a bounce. So <laughs> I'll be, be well, though. Later. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the place is called uh, Ganga Studio and they do phenomenal work. I just I think I'm just like I. I didn't grow up broke, but like I was in college and I was super broke. So so I can't justify spending that much money on a tattoo. I just can't do it. Um, But I will show you guys a picture. It'll be on my Twitter. So if you guys are following my Twitter, I'll post it again on Wednesday so you can see it. It's a Ghibli or Ghibli. I always say it wrong. Um, It's inspired by that. So Look at this studio. I'm on their website now and I think I want a tattoo or at least just to... (laughs) The experience of being in this place. Wow, what a nice looking place. Yeah, it's really nice. It's really nice. So if you guys like, maybe I'll, we'll post the link down below. You guys check it out if you want to tap into three grand. And her tattoo is pretty big. It's like on her shoulder. So this other guy was getting a tattoo and literally it was like a box with some words in it. And he put down a down payment and then like my friend overheard the receptionist being like, yeah, so you owe like... 3,500 like he had already put down a deposit and he said listen when I tell you this tattoo to me it looked like and this is no hate on them but it looked like 
just a box with like some words in it. And I was like, three, like what? Like four grand. I could have done that with a Sharpie. And like, you could come to me every day and I would make sure that like, it looked perfect, you know, like for $3, like it was just crazy. But um, no, um, big ups to them. Cause like, once you get to that stage and your art's just really well known, like you can charge yeah. money like that and it's not a big deal. But I will say and this. walk up three hours late. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, too. And be late. <laughs> right. I will say this. I think it's absolutely rude to be that late and not communicate that that's what's going on. I don't care how famous you are or what kind of artist you are. Like, if somebody flies all the way out to, like, patron to be a patron of yours, like, mm. you should definitely communicate that. Because we had mm -hmm. no idea. I was just like, what is happening? Like, you know? So, um but Guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold you to that because I think of the four of us, you're the most likely to make it. Like I don't know, Rihanna, Beyonce, people Love keep saying that, and I don't it's know why. Happen. It's gonna happen. <laughs> so when you come to SNL or whatever, I'm gonna I'm gonna like find out how late you were and be like, see, I knew she's just like the rest of them. I, she I have it. anxiety. <laughs> but wait, Adam, I have anxiety about being late. Listen, I am so yeah. like at work. I'm always at my meetings like ten minutes early. It's unnecessary because I work remote. It's absolutely unnecessary. I could log in right on time. And I'm like, man, yeah, I better get in there 10 minutes early. You never know what's going to happen. So, um, <laughs> yeah, but I'll be on time, I promise. Yeah. Um, other than that, what did I do? I was introduced to a game by a friend. I'm not going to drop their name, but um, introduce they know who they are. Introduced <laughs> to a game called House Party. And I don't know if you guys have ever heard of House Party, but it is a, like, when you look it up, it's it's exactly what it looks like. It's a raunchy comedy adventure. A lot of and voice acting, right? There's voice acting in it, yes. A lot of voice acting. Um, my favorite character so far is Frank. Um, the only thing that threw me off is, like, there's a lot of sex in the game, which I did yeah. not expect. Um, and like, I think it would have been fine <laughs> if their faces weren't expressionless the entire time that they're doing stuff and they're still the voice <laughs> acting because they're like moaning and stuff, but like the, there's no like facial expression. Right. And like you, we talk about crazy stuff. I feel like we should have a whole episode about this game at some point, but like there's one part which was like hilarious and I just have to talk about it. They had a penis size contest. Oh. where this one guy was like his name is like frank frank believes that having really big testicles means like you're a real man right and that's All because right. he's always heard it growing up and i was like oh my god frank is so stupid he thinks <laughs> that he literally has to have big balls and he doesn't understand that it's a metaphor for uh -huh. like having big balls means you're a real man you know what I mean? so, he's a literalist Five minutes in this game, maybe 10 minutes. You have to go around getting like people to talk to him. And you're like, okay, what's more important? Having a big, you know, manhood or having big testicles. And he's sitting there arguing his point the whole time. It is the most ridiculous conversation I've ever heard. And I know that it has happened at some point and that's why they put it in the game. But if you guys can't, <laughs> definitely check out the game. Don't, it's not safe for work. <laughs> It's not yeah. safe for like kids to be around, but I was just like enthralled because I was watching them play it. And um, he was like, you can make the choices. And I was like, there's too much anxiety here. I can't yeah. make choices like this. I'm not a dude. So I don't know what to do. But yeah, no, that game's gross. I've I is, checked it out like a while ago. So, and I was it like, is so gross. It is but, so, oh, so gross. Is but so like, <laughs> listen, my <laughs> it was like watching. Oh, my God. Revenge of the Nerds, but in a video game. That's what it felt like to me. Like, because Revenge of the Nerds is really gross too. The whole time they're trying to get laid. Yeah. I don't know. This is like dating me. It's a really old 80s movie. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. It's like really stupid. But that's what it was like. I think this game would have been amazing without the sex. I'm just going to say that. I think they could have gotten <laughs> their point across without doing, they could have done a fade to black and it would have been fine. But um, evidently, nice. Doja Cat is going to be the next DLC and she's going oh to be God. in the game with full voice Ooh. acting. So oh I thought, God. I thought I had to put that out there. Yeah. No, no, it's a really, it's super popular. Well, <laughs> the the game is, yeah. It's super popular. Of don't. course it is. Of course it is. Right. Oh, but, um, yes. so that, and just like playing Minecraft and, you know, doing things here in LA, which is really, mm -hmm. really cool. Um, nice. yeah. 
Oh my gosh, this game so is mad. ridiculously popular. It's got yeah, ten thousand super- reviews on Steam, and it's a paid game. Yeah, I was like, ah, ten k, maybe some free to play thing. It's twenty five bucks. It's got ten thousand reviews, which means it's, it's sold like a million copies. Popular. Super oh, public. I will tell you, probably ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the people playing this game are dudes. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> well, but, the more uh, you know, learned about something yeah. new today. I guess. I mean, I definitely think you should play it. There are achievements. I I want you to play this game. I will buy it for you because I want to see. It. <laughs> I will buy it for you and Lou because I oh, want yeah. to see your reaction. I Lou, would you play it if I bought it for you? Of course. Oh my God. Okay. Christmas <laughs> is coming early, baby. Anyway, so- <laughs> <laughs> Matt, uh, what have you been up to? I'm sorry. I took too much time. Matt, go. No, it's all good. As for me, uh, I'll go quick. Uh, I've been playing Cult of the Lamb. Loving it. It's a lot of oh. fun. I have like been messaging friends and being like, do you want to join my cult? I've gotten more yeses with zero oh, explanation than me. I anticipated. Lou, did he ask you? No. Wow, you've been okay now. Okay, keep going. What else did you do? Destiny, today? you what? didn't want to know anything about the game. Do you, you want me to ask explain me? To you you could have asked All right, me. I'm gonna that. put you in. I'm gonna put you in. If you eat shit, not my problem. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not being hyperbolic. That is literally a thing that happens. If you, if your character asked me to eat shit, or, or you know what. No, I here we're off like to I the races. I should have been like one of the first people on the list because you knew no, how excited no, I was. No, it's all good. No, game. because. No, no, because I was like, I don't want to feed Destiny shit. And here we go. You're out here <laughs> calling me out. Want any shit? That's fine. I'll, I'll support you in all your endeavors. If it's um, in game, I'll do whatever it takes to get the achievements. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've really been enjoying it. The action side of it, like the action roguelike is a lot of fun. And then, you know, building up the cult has been, uh, has been fun. I've only a couple hours in, but I'm really enjoying it so far. Uh, I want to shout out PlayStation Canada for sending over a copy of Spider-Man for PC. Um, been playing it on the Steam Deck. I uh, got it basically to run at a pretty stable 40 to 45 frames per second on medium settings. Again, the fact that this thing runs on a Steam Deck is blowing my mind, let alone mm. that runs decently well. Was never expecting, you know, top of the line graphics and frame rate out of a Steam Deck. Um, so I'm really happy with how well it does run. I'm excited to continue on PC just to really, you know, take it for its, take it for its journey. Uh, so shout out to PlayStation Canada. Thank you very much. And then also want to shout out the team, uh, the PR team behind Shin Chan, me and the professor on summer vacation, the endless seven day journey, um, sent over a couple codes for me and Destiny to check Shin Chan out. So uh, we'll have uh, impressions, videos, and a whole bunch of other stuff going live very, very soon. But I just want to shout them out. Thank you very much. We appreciate the support. Uh, and we'll have thoughts, our thoughts on Shin Chan very, very soon. But without further ado, Adam, let's talk because you're working on a really cool game. And I, my, I myself, as a big fan of Sonic Adventure, as a big fan of Mega Man, I feel like Proto Droid is like speaking to my inner soul. So I wanted to ask, you know, can you tell us a little bit about the game and how you got your start on it? Dude, that's exactly like, oh, man, um, those are the two things that got me going, actually. So, like, uh, yeah, it's basically an homage to like Mega Man X. So I always loved Mega Man X as a kid. It's like, some of my, some of my, one of my favorite games ever. Um, and I was always just like disappointed that like, <clears throat> of all like the iconic, like 2d characters, like, like Mario, Metroid, Zelda, um, all, all, all those titles, like Mega Man didn't quite make that leap to 3d in like any meaningful or, or like good way. There's a couple of titles, like four in total. It's like two Mega Man legends. There's Mega Man X seven, which is not very great. And then there's like Mega Man command mission, which is technically an RPG. So that doesn't really count. And, mm-hmm. but there's like a, the Mega Man catalog is like 30, 50 some odd games big it's like it's huge if huge. you don't include the battle network games it's like 33 titles of like those like are my favorite mainline mega man right and that's um, like already like 15 but yeah go on <laughs> yeah yeah and so i was like man it just it'd be cool if there was like a 3d version of it that actually played well and kind of like properly transferred like translated the awesome 2d movement and the character design just a cool world into 3d um but sonic is important because like i got my start as a game dev as a hobbyist i'm still a hobbyist technically um, but trying to make like a Sonic Sonic game in 3D, I called like Sonic Explorers was the name of it. Um, and I was like, they had this like, <laughs> he's raising I his hand. I checked it out. I played it. Oh, I play- <laughs> yeah, when, when I heard you were coming on the show, I actually, yeah. I watched you on Black Voices and Gaming a few months ago. And then I, I heard you talk about it. I was like, let me check it out. And if, yeah, like, I'm so excited because like, I was blown away. I played a bunch of fan games and you know, you can usually tell Sonic feel like the movement and the, the, what's it called? The physics felt so good that I'm so excited ah. to see why, you know, how much you've grown and how much you've like translated into Proto Droid. Because, like, even, uh-huh. even playing Sonic Explorers, it already felt great. And, like, I truly ah. mean that. Thanks, buddy. Oh, 
oh my yeah that's the whole point of that game because like if you remember sonic adventure like the original ones he controls like crap at high speeds you basically are ping-ponging between walls and rails (laughs) and you're like if i just hold up god help me and that's like it's just your best strategy and then like they try to simplify things in 3D and where it became just like boost to win, where it's like you literally just hold the boost button and you don't have to do anything. He just kind of runs through everything. And I was like, these aren't like really compelling like care, like game designs uh, for someone who could. So that was a challenge with Sonic Explorers. It's like, how do you create a this character control or like a design where like they move well in low speed and high speed? Because what happens mm-hmm. is at low speeds, like you want to go in the direction you play, you, 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 um, you point the joystick at. So like it should be one to one. But then as you pick up speed, if you do that, then the mouse becomes like, or the joystick becomes has a lot of sensitivity to it. Where right. like the slightest tweak and you're still going at one-to-one movement. And so what you got to end up doing is like kind of like, I want to say like slugging the input, but like forcing it to move more to like a, like a motorcycle or a car. Where it's like, if I have a high speed, if I want to change direction, there's going to be like a radius to it. Like I'm forced me to like go outwards a little bit. And then you suddenly become much more controllable at high speeds. Um, but yeah, dude, I was wondering why you mentioned those two tiles. Like, he must either know something. Oh yeah, no, I told him. I, told him, I told him to be ready. I said, prep yourself. We bring it on Adam. The thing that's funny is that like Sonic Frontiers, I mean, is very similar to that game I made, the Sonic Explorers game, where it's like you have like an open zone and you kind of go to different places in the map. And you do like set of like uh, like challenges or like platforming things, which then unlock more of the level, more of the world. But it's like this open world, semi open world kind of Sonic game. So. Um, I don't know. I find it to be quite a funny little like like uh, coincidence, but that's what got my, my start was this ambition that like I can create like a really good like Sonic game in 3D, and that I worked for that for like a year or so to get the Sonic Explorers. Um, what you're playing now is like a version two. The version one I submitted for like Sage, the Sonic Amateur Game Expo, and that jump looked man. We don't talk about. <laughs> that. <laughs> game Bruno, dog. We don't talk about that one, man. I'm telling you, uh, but. But I learned a lot from it. I learned a whole lot. And then more importantly, I learned a lot from watching people play it and like not trash it, but just getting some feedback and just getting a sense of just growing as a developer. Um, hmm. But yeah, then it became like one thing after another. It's like, okay, what are other IP that I loved as a kid that I kind of want to see, you know, either revived or like translated? Because my thing is like, I really like modernizing titles. I know a lot of people when it comes to like retro or like or like, or like nostalgia gaming, they kind of want to recreate it in, in the way they remember it. Right. Um, that's cool. But like I personally get a lot of jolly out of like advancing something. It's like, how do I take the essence of what was there, but then make it modern with like a modern like interface and modern game design considerations and modern graphics and stuff to an extent, like something cartoony and stylized. Um, mm-hmm. So Sonic Explorers to then this fan game I call uh, Mega Man X and Zero Training Missions, which was like, which eventually became Protodroid Delta was just like a 3D Mega Man X is like three levels. And that was fun. From there, a Mega Man Legends 1.5. The idea was like, oh, this game takes place between Mega Man Legends 1 and 2, and it's kind of fun. And um, I learned from that that I definitely don't want to make that game. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long, that was a good lesson, and nope. Oh, man, that jump. <laughs> RPG systems suck, man. You got to sit here, <laughs> you like designing tables and spreadsheets, and, and they got an interface, especially particularly with Unreal and Blueprint system. Like, oh man. Dealing with structs. Oh my anyways, I'm nerding out a little bit much. But nah. Um, and then the last thing I did was an ape escape. Okay, this one is my personal favorite, but this one has no commercial viability. Like no one they, hear me out. All right, hear me out. It's called it's inspired by Ape Escape, but instead wow, in, in this world, Ape Escape's a classic, right? I haven't seen yep. that game in years, right? But instead, it's like you live in like this. The idea was like it's a magical world where people kind of like, as opposed to technology like was Ape Escape, it's like magic is like the thing. And there's like this angry kind of like witch lady. Who, who decides to enchant all the stuffed animals in the world. And now the stuffed animals, she brings them to life and they have become aggressive, right? They're like, they're stuffed <laughs> animals who become very tough, very tough stuffed animals and they've tough beaten people. Teddy bears. And so the game is called Tough Stuff. <laughs> <Love it. laughs> That's cute. That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Um, oh, and it's, a, it's a demo for that too. All my stuff was on like Game Jolt and Itch, but like it's a demo for each of these four games. And then so from the four, I was like, well, looking back, which one is a good blend between what I like to make and what I'm good at making? Like right. I, um, I loved making Mega Man X and Zero, and happened to be but that game I knocked out the fastest out of the four. Um, okay. Besides the Ape Escape, besides the tough stuff one, the Sonic game, while fun, like. I like I could make that one, but it wasn't as much fun, and and then like the 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 content doesn't really scale as well. 
And I just wasn't like feeling it as much, particularly because like a lot of it rides on the power of Sonic as an IP. And if you don't right. have that, it's like, mm-hmm. is this really people? It's like in Sonic in this world, it's very compelling. It's like, okay, yeah, I want to do that. But like Red the Panda, which was working title for a t- for a character. Yes, indeed. No one's buying that. Or like, no one's like going to get up. For like, oh yeah, I love Red the Panda. He's clearly original. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. Um, the Mega Man Legends was a hard net no, no because as much as I love it personally, like the, like the world of that making that game was miserable. Like I did not enjoy that at all. Um, so yeah, that kind of made it very clear that like like Proto Droid Delta, like something from Mega Man X and Zero training missions was what I would need to do. And then um, that's where kind of the nexus of where that's where Proto Droid started off. I was like, okay, but now let's turn this into something like that's unique and something that doesn't belong to Capcom. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, I mean, like Capcom's not doing anything with Mega Man nowadays anyway, so. I know, it's, yeah, it's, it's a gap. It's like, you know, there's not really anything like this. And so that's what's going to be cool is that, like, my game is kind of carving out this niche because it's, like, it's similar. The most similar parallel is, like, Ratchet and Clank, but mm-hmm. it's much more level-oriented and much more platforming-oriented. Ratchet and Clank feels a lot more like a third-person shooter with, like, cartoony characters. Yeah. And I really want to distance myself from that and focus more on the core... The superiority of Mega Man, which is like you just you know what is it sequelitis? You just jumping and shooting. You just yeah. jumping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love those uh-huh. videos. And so, so I you have lose- a question. Oh, I'm sorry. What? What? Somebody was going to say something. No. Uh, the last point was just like you end up losing that once you have to introduce the second stick. Once you have to ask a player to start oh, manipulating yeah. the right stick, it's no longer a pure. Like, I'm going to say like a pure, but it's no longer like the simplicity of the game of the game that's inspired that it's inspired by. And so. um and so, yeah, yeah, these are all like, um, yeah, all these things kind of rolled into, yeah, Protege Delta. So what I wanted to kind of point out, and I pointed it out on Black Voices in Gaming, because all of your inspirations are like, basically the protagonists are male, right? And you decided to go with like a female protagonist, which made me super hyped and super excited and a person of color, which yeah. I love that because I know a lot of like um, Black developers that I've seen kind of are afraid to put us in the forefront of their games because they feel like they might not sell as well. But I love that you did that. And I love that you picked a female. And could you talk a little bit to our listeners about like what happened for you to make that choice? Why you thought that was the best fit? It just felt like, okay, for a number of reasons. So like, number one, looking at the games that I was inspired by, um, you know, you look at, I I put together like a slide about this because it was like just so telling. It's like, in the Mega Man franchise alone, right? You've got like over 30 titles, like literally like over 100 characters and like every single protagonist across every title is male, except for like the advent, like the later titles towards the end, you might get three or four, but overwhelmingly they're, they're, they're male protagonists and like there's zero like black or, brown, or like Latino or brown characters and like any of that. And it's like, man, that's like a lot of, that's a lot of the same, you know? And then certainly if you look at like Super Smash Bros, Melee, like other games like this, or Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, my, my correction, um, it's got like 70, like 80 some odd characters and like less than 25% of them are like female. And then like even fewer of that, like less than seven are like either black and skin or, or brown. And if they are, they usually either some like evil person like Ganondorf or like Dark Link or like Dark Pit or like mm-hmm. a, like a gold skin to somebody. So you, if you look at the title screen, you yep. like the, I made a little joke about there are more like furries than there are like black people or like even just people of color, like in all uh, of this matter. Yes. Yes. And the reason why this is important is because, like, Smash is not an indictment on, like, Nintendo. It's, like, a reflection of the gaming history in general. Because it's, like, yep. these characters represent the pantheon of, like, some of those iconic characters across franchises, across platforms for 30-some-odd years. And in all that time, the most you get that's not that that's either black or Latino or brown or something is, like, some alt skins, maybe to an inkling, or or bad guys. And so it's, like, okay, like... This, this doesn't look like people who I knew growing up. You know, it's kind of sucks that, like, we have all this rich history of gaming, but, like, very, very seldom are people who look like myself or the people I knew growing up are featured as, like, like in the same way that other heroes are featured, you know? So I really mm-hmm. wanted to sort of address that. And then, like, that coupled with the lack of, like, females, like, in games, they usually are just, like, ah, oh, man, I'm personally, like, very passionate about this because I find it really irritating. It's, like, um, how oftentimes girls just depict it as, like, they're definitely designed with guys in mind, right? Yes. Yeah. They're designed... They're designed to make it so that more guys buy this thing. And so how do you do that? You make her look sexy or whatever. Or, like, you got all these guys in armor, like, down to their toes. And then she's got, like, bikini armor because, like, God forbid that she doesn't look sexy on the battlefield. Like, you're like, what is this? Yeah. And it's like such a common thing. Um, and I just really wanted to sort of, like, buck those trends and kind of establish the space to show that, like, you don't have to, like, characters can just be cool in their own right without having to be, like, sexualized. They can just be cool because they are. And they need to be more opportunities where like females are like at the forefront and like this and like the cast is predominantly female. 
and and it isn't and it isn't surrounding around some sort of love story or some interest about some guy in order to validate or to yeah. add like weight significance to their experience, right? It should they can just be the same way you got a bunch of dudes running around as the Avengers and you don't make a hoot about it. You got a bunch of girls running around who are also awesome, and it's just just the way it is. So like, I'm trying to. It's it's funny because like I'm trying to be deliberate with Protege Delta and not people asking about it. I bring it up, but I try not to speak to it unless asked about it because I want to normalize it. Like I want it to be like, right. oh, cast is all girl. Like why wouldn't it be like well, that, that's just normal? You know, that's yeah, just it like should be commonplace. Like we're how, in 2022. Like why is it not? Exactly, 100. <laughs> percent And so all those things, all those things kind of rolled up, and, and I just felt that um, yeah, it was. It would be the most. It would make the most sense, and it would, and it personally motivated me the most. You know, what I'm saying to sort of like have like a black girl as like the main lead, and like her creator is also a black woman who reminds me of like she was, she wears a headscarf too because she's Muslim because it's like my family. That's how my family. That's what my mom looks like my aunt, my sisters. You know, what I'm saying it's and I was like you know in the same way that people. This is saying I learned from my game dev journey that people tend to create things in their own image. They tend to create characters in their own image. And so that's, you know, I don't necessarily think that developers of Euro of up to now have been like deliberately like racist or like, oh, no, I definitely don't want to do that. But people just tend to make stuff that looks like them and looks like the people that are around them. And so I was like, OK, well, I guess it's my turn. Right. Like, <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. No, I totally agree with you, except for like Japanese games, because none, none of them characters look yeah. like <laughs> I'm sorry. I got I to put it out there. They don't. They, they really don't. <laughs> um, true. I mean, I, I hear you. Um, but, but yeah, so these are all kind of the motivations that kind of like rolled into it. And um, yeah, just trying to make characters that are cool that, that, that of like, as I'm phrasing it, like for like making a bunch of characters for folks who don't often see themselves in gaming, who don't often see themselves in these particular roles and slots. Um, and uh, yeah, get people to look, look up to. That's incredible. And I, I love that you, you know, even just like the spotlight that's being shined on it without you actually bringing attention to it. Like other people are noticing what you're doing with it, which I think should be celebrated. And like you said, like, I hope we get to a point where something like this isn't like a, you know, a talking point, but I'm glad that we can celebrate it when it is done well and when it is special, because I think it still needs to be to let other people, because like even just how many people out there are like, woke game is woke because female protagonists. (laughs) Shut the fuck up, man. Just like live outside of your experience for half a second. Um, it really is that because to that point, Matt, like when I ran the Kickstarter, like one of the comments I saw, it wasn't a lot, but sometimes I see it, it was like, whoa, was this like woke Mega Man? It was like, what is this like, like POC or like whatever? And I'm like, and I would just reply like, oh, sorry. Like that's, they just look like the people I knew growing up. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's and such like, a good way to reply. I probably would have been petty. I was fighting to be petty, but like I'm realizing it's like these are like teachable moments or whatever. But I think I found that whenever I did that, it would diffuse the situation like significantly. And people they were all yeah. like, oh hey, I understand now. It's a and I so I see there's a lot riding with protodroid in this sort of like way to sort of like communicate things and teach things. And that's one of them is that like, you know, like that's the motivation. Just, I'm just making stuff that looks like the world that I happen to grow up and be around, you know what I'm saying? And the different types of people, particularly for those who didn't see themselves in the medium they spend a lot of time in. Right. Um, and mm-hmm. so like so yeah, 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 it's like uh, it's it's been it's been it's been so it's great when people notice it, and I don't have to say it. That means okay. No, I appreciate you doing it. Yep. I was super excited when you came on, and I uh, looked at the game and everything. And I remember you talking about that moment that like your little girl like oh, pointed yeah. to it. Yeah, I I remember because I was just yeah. like, that's so sweet. But yeah, um, was, yeah, yeah. Cool. I don't know if I mentioned to you guys, Matt and Lou, but basically like the moment that kind of like ca- encapsulated all of it for me was like my daughter. We were doing some like. I was working with my, my combo artist and she did some like del- designs of Delta and like various like hairstyles. Like she had braids and dreads and like straights and like, and like, and like, and like, a, like a curly fro. Um, and then my daughter comes up and she looks at Delta and she goes, Dada, me. And I was like, that's it. That's, that's it. You know, that's what you do this for. So people, she wouldn't look at Cloud Strife and say me. <laughs> no, <not> right? <laughs> you know, and he's iconic. A lot of people looked at him and said, yeah, that guy, I see myself in that guy. And so it's nice to create characters and, and experience people who can look at it and be like, I see myself in that person and that person's cool. Right. Well, I mean, like there are so many different types of people out in this world who deserve to see themselves represented in a positive light, not just like right. the sidekick or the background character or the comedic relief, right? Or like the best friend. hundred <laughs> percent, right? Like, like celebrate different, the, celebrate your differences. This shouldn't be something that's like, you know, cast away to the side and just kind of forgotten about like, right. hell yeah. Yeah. So like you know what's you funny? do because it's amazing. I wanted to say this really quickly. So like what they try to do in like media now is because like they know that's like really shitty to do to have like like a white main character and then give her um 
her best friend is always ethnic. So now <laughs> when they do it, that's the way it is. Every time they flip it, it's now like the main character is a black person or a person of color and their best friend is always white. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but it's like, I was like, you don't have to do that. Like, <laughs> that doesn't need to be a thing. Her best friend can be black. This could just be a black show and this could just be a white show. Like you don't need like Gregory down the street who just comes across <laughs> sometimes. You know, I just, so I give people random names. I don't know. But I'm just saying like, you don't need to do that. So I love that in video games, I love seeing so many people of color in um game development and the thing is is that like you're not waiting to be picked up by triple a you're not waiting to be a cog in the machine you're out there creating yeah. for yourself and for us and the thing that you mentioned about your daughter was it's going to stick with me forever because when i was growing up i think i've mentioned this before but like the closest characters that i related to and i didn't realize at the time why i liked them so much was like jasmine or like mm -hmm. um from aladdin or like right. Pocahontas, because they looked the closest to my right. skin color, right? right? And you, like, as a child, you don't even think about those things, but it's really important to see yourself represented. So I love that your daughter saw that. And I love yeah. that you're creating things, not just for men, you know, you you mm -hmm. think it's important to create things for women. And I, I want to say that, like, you are, you are an inspiration. And I, I really love that you're doing that. And I want our listeners to go out there and play the game and realize this is not a game just for black people or just for yeah. people of color. Mm -hmm. This is a game for everyone. And that's how it should be seen, commonplace. Yeah. It shouldn't matter. You know, it yeah. shouldn't matter if the main character is a girl or if she's black or if she's Asian. Like, just go out there and play the fucking game. Like, yep. enjoy it. <laughs> Uh, before I know we're starting to to get closer to the clock here, so before I jump into what will be our fast, final couple of questions, I want to throw it over to Lou. Lou, is I wanted to ask because you usually you always got the good questions, man. What do you got knocking around up in there? For sure, yeah. Just to just to touch quickly on what we were talking about, um, I one of one of my pet peeves and my girlfriend's pet peeves are uh, characters in shows that are written that are women that are written by men. Yeah. And I think Dragon Ball Dragon Ball Z is a great example, just because it's on the board. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're watching and we're like, okay, for mo much much of the show, like none of the characters are uh, people of color, first of all. Mm. And then um, uh, Piccolo, it's like Piccolo, he's a uh, very green. I want to clarify that. <laughs> <laughs> enough, yeah, but then it's like, uh, hmm, I wonder why Bulma is the only character that they have an extensive bath scene with right. you know what i mean right it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. this is right. this is right. from the 80s and made made by men for boys so yes makes sense um and then also like you know to have that moment of seeing yourself represented in the show super important but then at the same time i, I also feel like wouldn't it be great if we all saw ourselves in what we were watching not by how the person looked yeah but by the character their character traits mm -hmm. or, or you know, their their humility or their their strength or whatever it happens to be. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's, I think if we all, we all went down that line, I feel like, uh, like Jasmine. Yeah. Yeah. You go ahead. Sorry. Man, Cause yeah, I got just, points about that too. It's really yeah. Just point. real quick. Cause I mean like look at Miss Marvel, right? Like one of the most like highly rated things that Marvel's put out in the last few years and it has like the lowest viewership and one of the most common complaints is like, it's not for me. It's like, what do you mm -hmm. mean? She's a high school student dealing with responsibility, her family and powers. It's fucking Peter Parker. It's Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, but just yeah. because it's a, it's a, it's a young Brown girl. It's not for you anymore. Like, get, yeah, come yeah. on. No, I hear what you're saying. Luke. I mean, like, and I would say that, like, at least from, in my experience, and I imagine it's similar to people, it's like for folks having, having, when you don't look like the person that you're seeing, you have to do that. Like, I look at Tony Stark and I'm like, yeah, he's, he's, he's like my favorite of the Avengers because I just like his character traits. But like, when it comes down to, there's always like a little bit of a barrier, particularly when it comes down mm -hmm. to like embodying that person. Like when you want to do cosplay or you want to draw some character, you want to draw yourself kind of in that world. And then those differences become very stark and you realize, okay, as much as I see myself as a Peter Parker, see myself as this, I'm not quite that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And there's always going to be a bit of a disconnect. And if I were to dress in this way, like people wouldn't recognize me for Tony Stark. They'd be like, oh, like, are you like War Machine? Are you something else? It's like, and whereas, and so that little bit of a barrier is kind of like, you know, it's not like a tragedy. It's not like the greatest crime in the world, but it's it happens enough and there's a, like, where it starts to build a sort of like subtle sort of message that like, you know, there's a certain look that you need to be to be considered a hero. There's a certain there's a certain way you must be you oh must appear God. in order to be yeah. more broadly considered to be accepted or like exceptional. You know, and if you don't have that, just inserting yourself into it, mm, it doesn't quite 
because you see how much of a fit people get in when all of a sudden that you know they got Riri Williams or like you just try to swap the character yep. with a different race like Ariel being like the, the new little mermaid now that she's like cast as black it's, and then there's a little bit of backlash about that and it's like if she were cast as like I don't know like Eastern European or like Arab if, if you didn't know she was Arab people wouldn't say anything because she still yeah. looks the part so to speak so it's like totally. and 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 to, and to Matt's point about folks not relating to Miss Marvel it's like the tough part about it is that like it's like hey welcome to you know welcome to the way the rest of the world has been consuming media like a lot mm-hmm. of us either the things we look at and our stories are very seldomly represented but we this is the media but we like the action sequences and we like the personality of the characters and we have to sort of like look past those things that like aren't quite culturally in line with what we experience um mm-hmm. and we just insert ourselves and so it's like you know it's it's, it's so it's kind of a nice kind of like awakening moment from folks it's like hey yeah well We've been doing this for like 40 years, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Since media came out. But um, yeah. yeah, no, I wanted to speak on that just a little bit. It's really hard. I think it's hard for for someone who's always seen themselves in the media to understand how important it is for people who have seldomly saw themselves in media. And I would say that Black Panther, I'm just going to bring that up as why it was such a phenomenal like movie why Chadwick's performance was so phenomenal because you actually had like little white kids and little Asian kids who wanted to be Black Panther and that was the yeah. most amazing thing that, that was so right. amazing it, it was it was incredible and it showed black people that we could be heroes too and that we could be heroes and be successful and I think it was important for the rest of the world to see that as well yeah. so we are making steps towards that um, but we still have a really long way to go. Like yeah. you said, people are like, I, I don't want to watch Miss Marvel because da 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 You know, well, yeah. uh, I don't want to watch Captain America because, <laughs> you know, I don't want Right? I can't like, relate have to a problem. World War II vet, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I can't relate to this for the World War II vet. I, I didn't know what World War. what's going on there. <laughs> Tony Stark, rich white guy? <laughs> it really is. like, But people have a problem with with. Personally, when I've said that, so I've said things like, I want to try to watch movies that purposely uh, have more diversity in them. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I don't get this from like other black people or other brown people. They're like, no, no, I get that. I specifically get it from white males and they get like really upset. Like, well, like, what does that mean? Like, da 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 And like all this woke culture. And it was like, what's wrong with wanting to see myself? Right. And what I'm watching, like, I don't understand why that's offensive to you. You don't have to watch it if you don't want to. But um, yeah, no, I love that you're creating this game. I know we're running yeah. short on time, but I also wanted to say thank you. I'm going to throw it back to Matt in just a second. But guys, just just realize that, like, it should be commonplace. We are working towards yeah. that. And there's mm-hmm. no reason for you to be angry about it. Like, if you don't want to watch it, just don't watch it, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, Lou, did you have? I think I felt like you had another question. You were ruminating, swirling. Damn, Lou, I'm sorry. It's no, it's all good. It's all good. My my question was going to be, what has been the biggest challenge so far uh, with developing Protodroid? Man, the biggest challenge, honestly, dude, the art, bro. Like, I yeah. feel like, 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 two things. One, the fact that it's not my full time job. I, I know for a fact, if I had done this, if I was doing this full time, like, I'd have been done like a year ago. Easy, my lord, I'd be <laughs> easily. Uh, but I've been working on it for about a little over two years now um, and largely driven by the fact that, like, you know, I'm pretty much moon, moonlighting with this, um, which has been fun. You know, it's, you know, I got a wife and kids. I've got a pretty solid, stable, like, day job. And so I didn't feel it didn't feel right risking that for what was largely like a passion project at this stage of my life. You know, um, I felt like other people, you know, the people who, who make that plunge, you know, more power to them. I just felt for me, it wouldn't be a really good fit. But that's been like the main challenge, like juggling two things. Uh, but beyond that, it's definitely been the 3D art. Let me tell you, man, 3D art pipelines. Oh my god, so hard, so expensive, so time consuming. Because it's like you see like a world, right? Like it's not nicer in 2D because you can just like you know slap together. I don't want to say slap together, but like you can get like a parallaxing background, and there's your whole world design. Like it's, mm-hmm. like, it's like a couple of sprite sheets, and the whole world gonna look like that, and no one will bat an eye. But in 3D space, it's like because players can rotate freely the camera and all kinds of places, you have to design assets that look good from like every side. You have to think of the design of that asset from every from every angle. You have to think about where the player might go. You have to design the space to kind of prevent them from going to certain places. And then just the, the, the pipeline from going from like concept art to final 3D asset is like really tough because sure you have a 3D, you have a concept art of like this beautiful panning solar punk looking image or whatever. 
But then you got to get that over um, to like some 3D modelers and they're going to ask, okay, what kind of pieces do you want to make out of this? I could just make that bridge I and mean, I could just make that big like solar panel thingy, but I can't populate 3D space with those two assets. Like I need like building blocks, like bricks, mm -hmm. like things like Kind of like you think of like Mario levels. I need like, or like Mario Maker. Imagine that, but like in 3D. I need stuff that I can sequence one after another and make walls and then make ramps. And then how do you then translate that singular concept art into each of those individual assets? And then once you finally find a way to do that, then like this is the pipeline of like, you know, how the person actually authors the asset, like what, what sort of material definition they use and what kind of texture maps they're using. Are they using the right, like, right, like aspect, the right resolution? Um, oh my gosh. I easily have spent the most time and money and headache on the art pipeline. Um, the game design part was like, by like, <laughs> not even nearly as hard. <laughs> <laughs> not even nearly as hard. Um, so that, that's been really tough. And I think, kind of dovetailing off of that, also finding quality talent. I've been fortunate to work with like work with indies.com to find a bunch of like freelancers and contractors and people who want to jump on the project. Um, a little bit from ArtStation. Um, some nice finds on Fiverr as well. Like my the game's main illustrator, he and I connected on Fiverr originally. Amazing. Um, I love Fiverr. Um, you can find some uh, talented people yeah, on there. Fiverr's legit, you know? Yeah, it, uh, is. Yeah, it is. You just got to know what you're doing. It takes a little, it's a little bit of learning curve, like to kind of like get past like the not so great to find some, but like, yeah, I found some tremendous people over there. I think I found um, the person who did our intro and our outro on Fiverr. There you go. Look at that. Look at that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah. And so um, those are, yeah, to your question, uh, Lou, those, those have been like the toughest things about the development easily. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to save my favorite question or classic question for the next time Adam comes on, because I know we're starting to run a little bit long because Adam, it has been an absolute incredible pleasure having you i hope you come back and rock again with us in the future i'd love to i hope i wasn't ranting too long i feel no, like I'm you a... weren't. no not at all no 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 <laughs> we're very you much a conversational sure you get to your appointment so don't yeah, right. that's right. not a pet sure yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> no our, our, uh, this show is very much a conversational and free-flowing thing we get sidetracked all the time right. but i talked about frank's balls so you know that's, I mean, that was, that was, as that we was, do, we, we did talk about that. As we yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> but Adam, if people want to learn more about yourself and learn more about ProtoDroid, where could they do so? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so mostly on, on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash ProtoDroid Delta. Uh, that's usually where I post updates. Um, and there's a link to like the Kickstarter. About once a month, I'll post like a backer update and the people, anyone can kind of click and see just to let the progress there. Um, we got a landing page on Humble. I don't know if people noticed, but like a couple months ago, I signed a publishing deal with Humble Games because they've been tremendous supports throughout the life of the project. And and we kind of like, you know, if you like, they, they pulled a Beyonce, you know, they liked it. So they, put it <laughs> <laughs> they know what's up. So they know what's up, man. Uh, and so, um, so yeah, yeah. So like um, on, on, on the Humble site as well, there's also, we got a Steam page. So if you, go, you just search Proto Joy Delta on Steam, um, you can wish list it today. Um, the target platform has become a lot of platforms: um, PC, uh, Switch, Xbox, and PlayStation. Um, nice. But yeah, the wish lists are always very helpful. You know, that's kind of you know the algorithm overlords. You know, people are kind of beholden to those. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And uh, yeah, that's what you can let you can learn more. Yeah, and uh, yeah, thank you. Please, please go check it out. We will have the Steam link right in the description below. So make sure you click on that. Go wishlist it. Throw your support behind Adam and the incredible looking proto droid because I am excited to play it when the time comes. But again, Adam, thank you. It's a pleasure talking to you. And I hope we get you join us again in the future. Lou, Destiny, as always, it's always been one hell of a ride. And everybody, we will see you on the next episode. Peace. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>
I always assumed I was the only one. You cannot allow the worthless lives of a few gang leaders to jeopardize the safety of thousands of civilians. Life and death isn't yours to decide. We will find another way. In order to win, I must grow stronger. Ay, mija, your blade is looking weak. Come, vamos. I will teach you my techniques. You will be the change.